Cleopatra Spring is the largest and biggest and most famous spring in Siwa Oasis. Many tourists come here to take a bath in its fresh cold water by summertime and by wintertime as well. There are other springs in Siwa Oasis, but this one has got special qualities. The temperature of the water differs from day to night. During daytime, it's cold, and during nighttime, it's hot. The salinity of the groundwater is from 1,600 to 8,200 fraction of million and sometimes reaches 2,000 or 1,700 fraction of million in some areas in Siwa, like Dakrur lakes. The temperature of water is between 26 and 30 degrees Celsius. As for the second layer, which has very fresh water, like the one used in bottling water in Siwa and also used in the main water network. Its water source is from the Nubian sandstone layers and it lies at depths of 600 meters to 1,500 meters below the ground. The percentage of salt in it is between 300 to 400 fraction of a million. This shows that some of the spring's water is unarable and unsuitable for irrigation due to its high level of salinity containing sodium and magnesium salt unless treated in a special way for some kinds of cultivation and plants. The rest of the springs in Siwa has a level of salinity between 1,700 and 2,000 fraction of million and thus are suitable for agriculture but need experience in irrigation and drainage. They are good for trees more than they are for vegetables. As for the fresh water, which is 300 to 500 fraction of a million, it's the best water to cultivate and drink. Throughout all the historical ages of Egypt, from Pharaonic to Greek and Roman, and until the middle of the 20th century, this water didn't exist, for it was to be found in great depths, which means that agriculture and drinking water at those times depended on the table water of limestone layers, which salinity was between 2,000 and 8,000 fraction of million. Today's freshwater's great depth is reachable by the means of new drillers that enable the water to flow at high pressure and its temperature reaches more than 50 degrees. Beyond doubt, the number of flowing water springs in Siwa in the past was a lot bigger than it is today, to the extent that the Arabs writers mentioned it to be over a thousand spring. Today, there is more than 220 spring head in Siwa, composed of flowing out wells since antiquity. They are called Roman springs, and their depth is between 4 meters and 15 meters or more, and their diameter is from 10 to 25 meters. These springs drain water between 5,000 and 25,000 cubic meters daily and the total draining of water is 185,000 cubic meters daily. The shallow wells are 1,200 in number and reducing monthly for some of them were closed and collected into group wells. Their depth varies between 50 to 220 meters 
and salinities from 500 to 7,000 fractions of million. Since antiquity and until 80 years ago, the cultivated land in Siwa was scattered and unconnected to each other. Around each spring, there was a group of gardens and cultivated land called Hataya. Its area is from 3 to 180 acres of land. Since the 40s of the 20th century, drilling in the depths of earth to 30 or 50 meters started and thus new source of water or a new spring could be found anywhere in the oasis and accordingly the cultivated lands area increased and were connected together. There used to be a very accurate conventional system for distributing the share of water for each farmer. A person called Wakil al Hataya or the village dealer keeps all the shares written down in his notebook. Another person called the watcher declares the times and shares of each farmer by calling from the top of the minaret of the old mosque of Shali so that the one with the share can hurry and receive it from his neighbor in the garden. Each spring turn comes from 12 to 21 days according to the area of the village and the power of the spring. The springs with lands cultivating seeds and grains have water directed to irrigate them, and that coincides with the ripeness of dates and olives, which don't need irrigation then. Each of these springs had a big superficial water reservoirs called talis. At night, water is reserved in them, and in the early morning, used in irrigation in multiple directions. Their locations are chosen to be in rocky areas to reduce the water loss. The biggest reservoir is in Ain el Juba. It's located north to the spring and is almost 16,000 cubic meters. Its water, used to irrigate the crops and some gardens, is to the reservoir. Usually, the water was directed to the springs in September and October and November and December and January. Crops like wheat and barley were irrigated five times before harvesting. The best lands beside each spring were dedicated to the cultivation of barley and wheat, consequently each year. They were called sigal and it was prohibited to grow any other cultivations in the land of barley and wheat in Siwa. Cleopatra VII has always been a controversial character with many secret aspects surrounding her life. She was destined to marry her younger brother Ptolemy XIV and to be the last ruling member of the Ptolemaic family, which ruled Egypt after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. The rule that ended with her death in 30 BC, at the age of 39, after which Rome ruled Egypt for 600 years. 
Queen Cleopatra was described to be a very beautiful woman who managed to capture the hearts of the Roman leaders, who are Julius Caesar and Antonius. One Roman named Cassius Dio said that she was the most beautiful woman in the world and that to look at her and listen to her voice, there was a flare and glowing. Apart from her real looks, which are of medium prettiness, she was fluent in languages. For the historian Plutarch said that her magical voice moved like a musical instrument from one language to another. It is said that she took great care of her beauty, that she left advices for women about the secrets of her beauty, to spread the valuable information. Cleopatra's eye of water in Siwa, or spring, was always connected to the character of that mighty queen, most probably because it's also connected to the hygiene and prettiness of the girls and women of the oasis itself. Taking into consideration that Alexander the Great did visit the oasis upon his arrival to Siwa, so to connect the last descendant of the Greek ruling family to the oasis is not a great surprise. In Mersa Matruh, which is almost 300 kilometers away from Alexandria, on the north coast of the Mediterranean, there is a beach named after Cleopatra. The water in the spring is kind of miraculous, for it's of changeable nature throughout the day. In the morning, it's cool and fresh, and by night time, it turns warm and healthy for the skin. These facts made the spring very popular, both in summer and winter times. Not only does it serve as a recreational spot in the oasis, but also it serves all the green cultivated land around the spot by helping in their irrigation on constant basis. Arabian historians have mentioned that more than a thousand spring flew with water in Siwa. That wouldn't be surprising when we know that the main water problem in Siwa is not its scarcity but its abundance. One of the most beautiful springs in Siwa oasis is called Ain el Juba. It lies a kilometer southeast of Umm Abaida Temple in Agurmi, and it's still called by the locals Ain al Hammam or the Bath Spring, as it used to be called in the past. That's because until the end of the 19th century, girls used to come to the spring on the afternoon of their wedding day to take a bath in it. Now, Ain al Juba is replaced by Ain Tamusi which is another spring, for the bath spring has lost its advantage being away from the public's eye so that women can have their privacy. According to the Syrian traditions, in the afternoon of the matrimonial day and after the wedding contract is signed, the bride wears her best clothes and goes directly to Tamusi Spring with her friends and some of her relatives. In older times, the bride would descend to the spring wearing one dress and have a full bath, but later she just washes her face and hands and feet. At the spring, the bride takes off the rounded silver relief pendant called El Adrom from its collar and hands it to her mother or one of her aunts so that it could be worn by her younger sisters or any girl in the family in the future. From the moment this group of women and girls leave their home, they sing all the time and during the bath of the bride in the spring. On their way back, they continue singing 
until they meet the women related to the groom. They would be waiting at a certain meeting point in the gardens by the edge of the city. Each one hands a gift of money to the bride, then they all sing until they all reach the bride's home. Till today, these traditions are well preserved and followed by young generations, for they maintain the bond formed throughout the history of the oasis between its springs and its people. Juba or Ain al Hammam, or the Bath Spring, is nothing but Ain al Shams, or the Eye of the Sun, that was mentioned by the Greek historian Herodot in his book written in 450 BC. He called it one of the wonders of the country of the Ammonians, which is Siwa Oasis, where God Ammon was worshipped. He said, They have a spring which water is mild in temperature in the early morning. Then, it gets cooler by the time the Syrians start to leave their homes, so that by noon time, its water becomes so cool, and that's the time they use its water to irrigate their gardens. When the day crawls into the night, water temperature rises and becomes normal by sunset. After sunset, its temperature rises bit by bit until it boils by midnight and after midnight it reverses its cycle and the boiling water cools down bit by bit until dawn and this spring or Ain is known as Ain al Shams this spring is known today by its unrealistic name Cleopatra spring and being a long name it was shortened by the locals to El Juba Spring or Ain El Juba. This is a touristic name told by amateurs for it was never proven that the queen came to the oasis. This name was told as a reflection and equality between Cleopatra's bath in the sea of Mersa Matruh city 300 kilometers away and this spring probably because it was used as a bath for the women of the oasis. <laughs> 